guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about sublimation, specifically what is sublimation and how you can get started with it if you are interested in it. So for me personally, I got started with sublimation uh, by having a cricket. When I had a cricket, I liked to take vinyl and put different sayings, different things onto a mug. And that got me thinking, okay, um, this is fun, but how can I make it permanent? Because whenever you're putting vinyl on a mug, it's not dishwasher or microwave safe. And while it's still nice to be able to have that ability with my Cricut, I wanted it to be able to be dishwasher and microwave safe. So through some research that led me to sublimation. So sublimation, if you're unfamiliar with it, is basically uh, the process of using a special ink and a special printer to print off uh, an image onto sublimation paper. And then you're going to use a press of some kind. So if it's a, a mug, you're going to use a mug press. If you're sublimating a shirt, you're just going to use a regular heat press as well. And when you do that, basically when you're heating it up, the special ink becomes a gas and it gets absorbed into the mug. And when you, when, by doing that, it basically makes the mug dishwasher and microwave safe and also allows you to put more detailed images onto a mug than you would be able to say using vinyl. So just to give you an idea, this here is a mug that I have done um, with sublimation. I'll turn it around for you to see. And as you can see, like on the back, it's, it's a lot more detailed. Uh, and stuff like that. So this really caught my attention with being able to all that it could do and then you could be able to sublimate shirts and it just it, hats and it goes on and on and on. So basically when I got started I was like okay so that's what sublimation is. It's basically taking it and put, putting it into a, a gas form so that it could be absorbed into the mug. Awesome. How do I do it? How do I get started? What do I need? So, so for a beginner, what you're going to need is you're going to need a special sublimation printer. You're going to need a heat press of some kind. You're going to need um, heat resistant tape, and you're also going to need sublimation uh, paper as well. And you're also going to need a mug that is able to sublimate. You can't just use any mug. So if you're currently using a Cricut and you are uh, going to like the Dollar Tree to get a dollar mug, that's not going to work with sublimation. Uh, basically, with sublimation, you have to have anything that's uh, polyester. So this has like a polymer coating on it. So that's what's going to allow it to sublimate. So basically the Dollar Tree mugs are out. However, these mugs you can find online on Amazon and they come to uh, about a little less than $2 a mug. So it's not like it's a huge price difference going from the Dollar Tree mugs to a sublimation mug, if that's what you're interested in. But as far as getting started with it, there are a couple different things you can do as far as a sublimation printer. Now you can go pretty cheap and, and just basically be a beginner type style printer. And you can also go very expensive and have a very high tech sublimation printer. So what you wanna do is basically gonna depend on your personal preference, how much you wanna just jump right on in there or if you kinda of wanna try it. For me personally, I did not wanna spend the money to just go all in, at least not to start. I wanted to see kind of what it was, am I gonna like it when I actually have it kind of a thing. So what I did is I took um, an Epson printer that I had seen some YouTube tutorials on how to convert it from a regular printer into a sublimation printer because it is not designed to be a sublimation printer. Um, the Epson C88 Plus, I believe, is the one I used on there. And I will take you over and I will show you my original sublimation printer. Um, but it, you have to basically print, you put it together basically. I put, I ordered everything I needed for it on Amazon and I had to assemble it together. So I will show you my original printer now. Okay guys, so this is it. This is my original um, Epson printer that I used for when I began sublimating. Um, basically what it is, is this is just a regular printer that I ordered on Amazon. This cost me a little over $100, I wanna say, for the printer itself. And then I had to print, uh, purchase as well, like this continuous ink flow system, which then takes it through into the ink cartridges here and goes through there. So you do need the special ink, you need the special continuation ink system, as well as heat resistant tape and the paper. So, but this itself um, is a relatively inexpensive way to start out, as you can see. But as you can see, it's a regular printer. There's, there's nothing, fancy about it the way I ordered it. It was basically what I did to it that made it sublimation from there. So yeah, so that's how I got started with that. 
Um, but one thing that's important to note is that once you convert a printer into sublimation, you can't use it as a regular printer again. So you need to be sure. Don't go take your home printer and just convert it into a sublimation if you have an Epson printer, unless you, you only want to do sublimation from then on out. But like I said, for $100 to be able to have your own sublimation printer, it's not a bad way to start um, by any means. And in addition to um, the printer I just showed you, I had, uh, and I still use to this day, this particular mug press. This mug press um, was more about, I want to say around 160 and I did get that from um, US Cutter. And it, it does basically everything I need to do. It can do 11 ounces and 15 ounces in mug size and I've been quite happy with that so far. Um, but yeah, so from there, I pretty much quickly, um, not quickly, I, I've had that printer for Mm, goodness probably a little over a year and I've been very happy with it however being that it's not a truly designed sublimation printer I found that I ran into certain um, issues with it per se like how to clean it how to do certain just technical things that there was no support with and I, while I was able to figure that out it got frustrating over time that it wasn't consistent all the time the more I used it and I started sublimating more and more and more so that being said, I decided to go ahead and jump into um, a Sawgrass printer. Now, Sawgrass is a true sublimation printer. I pers personally purchased a sublimation, or sorry, excuse me, Sawgrass SG400 printer. I'm new to this printer, but I do absolutely love it. There is a night and day difference between using the Epson printer that I converted that was not designed for sublimation and the Sawgrass printer. So I'm gonna turn you around, and I'm gonna show you the Sawgrass printer so you can get an idea of the difference here. This is my Sawgrass SG400 printer. Now this particular printer um, was $550. <laughs> so it's, as you can see, it's definitely a huge price difference and it's, it's, if you're just curious about sublimation, it's kind of hard to, to justify and just jump on in there with the Sawgrass printer. But I can tell you from my experience, it has made um, a very big difference in terms of just the quality of the print as well as you have tech support that you can reach out to that it will help you that I have reached out to already and they've been very helpful and they also have a creative studio on their website that they can um, that you can design with as well so yeah that is just a basics of the sublimation and what it is and how you can start if you're interested you can start with something like Epson like I said that was not a sublimation printer that I converted everything came from Amazon so it's definitely something that can be done on the less expensive end and you can also go the more expensive end. Entirely up to you, whatever you want to do. But yeah, like I said, it just it gives you all kinds of different options between custom mugs and hats and shirts and you name it. So if you have a Cricut and you're interested in um, how to make your designs on your mugs permanent, definitely give Sublimation um, a look and see if it's something that you might be interested in. Or if you don't have a cricket and you're just straight up interested in sublimation, check it out. Okay guys, so um, I went ahead and did this and got it all set for you. Let's take a look. So basically my image is on here. It printed off, I cut it out, and then this is my sublimation paper as you can see the back of it. And then this is my heat resistant tape. Now, as far as um, the sublimation tape, the tape I ordered um, from Amazon, the sublimation paper normally I order from Amazon. This particular one came from Heat Press Nation. And um, my heat, my mug press is actually currently heating up, as you can see here. It's heating up. But one thing I did want to mention um, while I'm waiting for it to get there is that when you're done sublimating your mug, when the timer goes off, you want to make sure that you take off the paper and then you want to quickly put it into a bowl of hot water. What this is gonna do is it's gonna stop the sublimation process um, so the mug just won't continue to sublimate. Your image will stay at that point. Um, as far as um, the mug press itself, uh, temperature time and how long you press it, typically the mug um, and or the heat press will come with instructions to tell you exactly how long you're gonna, you're going to want to press it and um, at, at how much pressure, etc. So yeah, it looks like we are about ready to put it in. So let me move this cord out of your way. And for me, I on this particular mug press, I get, let it get to 370 degrees, and then I will sublimate it for approximately three minutes. So there we go, we are at 370. 
and it just clamps shut. You press the timer and we will count down. Yeah, so it's 180 seconds, so three minutes, and then we will have a beautiful mug. Okay guys, so we have 10 seconds left and the mug will um, be done sublimating. So as you're going to about ready here, it will let out a timer. So let us know that it's done, or beep, excuse me. So just turn that off, release the clamp, take out our thing, excuse me, and you want to take off, be very careful, it's extremely hot, and take off the tape like so, and you just basically put it in here, and as you can see, you're just going to leave it there in the water to cool off. Um, for me personally, I leave this in, a, in hot water for a few minutes, usually about three to five minutes, and um, then you can take it out, just dry it off, and it is done, and you will end up with your finished product. It will look like this or whatever, whatever it is that you've designed, but this is just to give you an idea of one I've done in the past since that one is too hot to hold at the moment. Um, but yeah, so that, guys, is just basic intro into sublimation, how you can start it, what it is, uh, printer options, how it works. So if you have any questions, please drop it below. I'd be happy to help any way that I can and hope you guys found this fun and entertaining. Please give it a like and a thumbs up, and please be sure to subscribe.